Okay guys, we're going to be lifting the car today, so we're going to make sure that you chalk your wheels before lifting. Okay, first step is we're going to be breaking the lug nuts loose on this, and if uh, you're having a little trouble, use a little penetrating oil to make it easier. We're going to remove all the lug nuts with a breaker bar, jack the vehicle up safely, and use a jack stand to support it. For safety, finish taking your wheel the rest of the way off. Next we'll be using a T55 torque socket to remove the brake caliper pins because you're going to need to get those out to remove everything from it. Get be a little stubborn sometimes, use a small pry bar to get the caliper off and lay that up to the side. Next we'll be using an 18 millimeter socket with a usually a half inch breaker bar or long ratchet to remove the caliper bracket away from the rotor. These can be um, pretty tough, they do have Loctite on them, so make sure you are removing them with some leverage. With enough work, they do come out. You can move that caliper bracket out of the way. Next step, wiggle your rotor off and heavily spray the area with penetrating oil. If you have time to do this, you know, let it sit for a couple of days, I suggest that. But, we are doing this now. Okay, and uh, I usually try to put the uh, caliper somewhere safely so that it doesn't fall from the brake hose. Next, we're going to be uh, taking the harness off. A couple clips you take off, and there's one main connector up above the strut shock there. Move that, get the connectors off to the side. And get all the clips out, let your wire hang. Next on the back side of the bearing, you're going to see the 15 millimeter bolts that hold it on. Use an extension and a 15 mil shallow socket to get to that upper bolt, or you can just use a shallow socket to get the lower two. The reason you're using the extension is to clear that upper ball joint stud, and that will uh, kind of inhibit you from taking the bolt all the way out if you just use the ratchet there, it'll kind of bind it up. So this is the easiest way to do it. Spin those out. And you'll see where I need that shallow socket only to remove this side, unless you can flip the steering around, but on the two-wheel drives you just get enough room to go through the whole thing. So, save yourself some time and just get it loose. And now you're going to beat the crap out of it. And that's why I wanted the caliper to sit somewhere where it's not going to fall. So, good thing to tie it up or something. And now I was really hitting the crap out of this. And uh, you can do all the hit it with your purse comments you want, but this thing is stuck in there. I sped up the speed on it. And uh, this is, if you have a new rotor available, don't do this if you're going to be reusing your rotor. But this is one step I do to try to get trouble wheel bearings out is bolt the rotor back under the hub backwards. It gives you a leverage point and up and down. And you might be able to break the rust ring on it. And I hit it repeatedly. It's here's an example of how it's supposed to come out. This was the left side and you can see how this pops straight out with a hammer. With little to no effort. That's how it's supposed to come out. So, when they come out the way they're supposed to, I use a 40 grit sandpaper to clean up the rust ring that was in there. And you want to clean them up the hub surface as much as you can, that way it's all flat, no rust is holding you back. Just get it all cleaned up and get that rust ring out of there. 
and uh, you can kind of see how clean I got it. So. Okay guys, so this thing was freaking stuck. Um, I'll post a picture right now, you can see how bad the rust truly was. It was seriously bad. Um, I actually had to heat this knuckle with a torch, almost to the point where, I mean, it was black and red hot. You couldn't even get anywhere near this thing. It was barreling heat, smoke every time oil touched it. I just have the bolts resting in there right now. But you can see, I did get the bearing out. This one was probably the most troublesome bearing I have ever um, had to get out, actually, of any of these. Four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, any of them for uh, the silver autos. This was seriously such a fight. Um, but since I had access to it, I brought it to my work, heated up with a torch, got the hub out with enough hammering. I actually took the sandblaster to it and cleaned up all the rust. I'm um, sad so having to do it. You know, it was just so scaly, you could still see some of the rust down here. So, I got that hub surface as clean as it's going to get with a sandblaster. You know, there's divots and stuff from the rust, but this one's knuckle's still intact, it's not bent. Um, yeah, I just sandblasted what I needed to. So we're going to put the knuckle back on to this side. Okay, now with the knuckle reattached, if you had to go that far, I use a thin coating of anti-seize on the hub center and the face of it before you put your new bearing back in. Keeps this, uh... Stuck hub from ever getting extremely stuck on you again if you ever do this job in the future again. And just do a thin coat. What I'm actually doing here is a little overkill. But now you're going to get your brake shield in place and slide your new bearing kind of through. And run your bolts in through the back side, as I'm shown here. Snug them up one at a time before you really crank on them. And then once you get them all snugged up individual, this is when you really start to crank down on it. And uh, if you have a little resistance turning, that's actually how it's supposed to be. So now we are going to reattach everything, get your harness hooked up, make sure your dust shield is on the right correction way, and I'm going to kind of put a newish rotor on. But before that we're going to put some anti-seize onto the hub surface as well to keep your rotor from ever sticking to the hub and having to hammer it off. And just a light coating is all you need. Then we're going to slide on the new rotor. You can always run a lug nut on if your rotor is falling off a little bit and make it easier for you to reassemble. So we're going to get our caliper bracket back on. Get your two bolts for that. And retighten those down with your 18 millimeter wrench. Or socket and ratchet. Kind of reseating the pads in. And actually, before I'm going to do this, I'm going to put a little brake lube onto the pads. Keep them quiet. I'm also going to recoat the pins before you put those back in. and reattach your caliper bolts back into the bracket And reattach your brake hose if you ever disassembled that.
little 10 millimeter bolt onto the knuckle and then we're going to reattach our harness use a zip tie to reattach it if any mounting points break on the old connectors or if you so you got the one main one little one up to the left zip tie the one and then it goes all the way down to the hub knuckle also make sure that your dust shield isn't touching the rotor you might have any squealing issues if you d did that and now the job is complete and you need to reseat the pads when you're done so now we're just gonna redo the wheel. Safely put the truck back down on the ground. And use a torque wrench to retighten your lug nuts. And I repeat, do not forget this step. Push your brake pedal a couple times until the pedal is firm again. That way you know your brake pads have seated. Hey, I'm Joe the Other Guy. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it helped you. Please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And my email's down below.